I'm here with Joe Rotella, and Joe has brought these amazing honeycomb shelves. Now, you, you've promised me this is an easy project, but it looks like it's really hard. Oh, it's super easy. We need six pieces of wood. That gives us a hexagon, all the same size, with a 30-degree angle on each one. Well, how, how do we get the 30-degree angle? Well, I've got a table saw set up, and if you look, see the blade is already set. Uh huh. I can go right down here and adjust it from zero to 45. A 45 degree angle, if we used four pieces of wood, would give us a rectangle or a square. Okay. So I'll put my gloves on. I will put my safety glasses on. You already have glasses. I'm ready to go. Now, the table saw has a fence, an adjustable fence. Okay. And we're tempted to use that. When you want pieces of wood that are the same size, you could adjust the fence and off you go. But a fence is typically used for what's called a rip cut. And That's when that? you're going with the grain. Okay. We're going across the grain. So this could be a little bit dangerous. It can pinch up here and cause kickback and the board could fly and hit us. Well, we don't want that. It's unlikely because we have what's called a riving knife. That's mm -hmm. part of the safety feature here. But just to be safe, I'm not going to use this. We're just going to set this aside. I'll take that. Oh, good. You know, I think anytime you're working with power tools, trying to keep your work area clean is part of keeping it safe. That's a good tip. So, now, what is this thing that you've just put on? Well, I call it a pusher, and it has a long fence on it to help keep everything okay. straight. And if you notice, it's set so that it just... Misses the blade. Misses the blade. So, I will admit, it's tempting you don't do it right and zoom, you've cut it right in half. We don't want to do that. No, we don't. <laughs> don't want to do that. And I've set up a vacuum attachment here. This is my regular vacuum, just plugs in. It's going to pull out all the sawdust. Cool. So, let's go ahead and turn it on. Trying to eye up the blade. And there we have a perfect thirty degrees. Very cool. So if I flip it we'll get 30 on the opposite side, ready? Yeah, so you just go back through, which is the orange thing that's on there is the safety. And so you have to lift the safety right every single time that you're trying to push the piece of wood yeah, through. Yeah, because I'm trying to see where I'm lined up. And in this case, I'm using the guide that I've set up on the end here. This is a riving knife. It splits the board in the back so that it doesn't come back, hit the blade, and fly back at us. So okay. it's another safety feature, the riving knife and then the cover. keep your fingers out of the way, you're using again another piece Absolutely. of plastic or something. Absolutely. But look so at that. We would make six of these, but you can see it's a little bit rough. Yes. And we could sand them by hand, but if we had made all six, that that's seems a like lot a of work. lot of sanding. So I have a little desktop sander. I'm just going to change the vacuum attachment to pick up all okay. that sawdust. It's really quiet. It is really quiet. I love the quiet part. I don't need to do both sides, but look. That's so nice and smooth now, and that was easy, right? So you make six of these, and you're good to go. Okay, so I know that I have six of them right here for you. Now this is magic to me. Okay. So help me space these out. Okay. What are we doing with them? Uh, watch. So we're just making sure that they're touching each other, is that they're right? They're touching each other. Now, if I were at home on my workbench, I uh -huh. would be a little bit fussy to make sure all the bottoms perfectly line up. Would you just do that like by pushing a ruler or something against or the bottom? Or a piece of scrap lumber. Oh, okay. And now you have masking tape. I have masking tape. Can don't I go, help you? Don't go past your end, Don't though. go past the end, so just at the end. I'm gonna go past my end. Oops. Keep them tight. I've already gotten it out of line. I'm a terrible assistant, Joe, but I'm trying one my job, best. One job, one job. One job, and I can't do it. So there now, you, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Let's do it again, three times. One okay. down the middle. I can't believe you're test you're trusting me again. I am I'm I wonder <laughs> myself. <laughs> but you
you know, this is what crafting with a friend is, is I'm learning as we go. And I have so much fun when I craft with you. Absolutely, me too. I always learn something new. Okay, so I've got my other piece of masking tape now, here. you ready? Yeah. Together, we're gonna flip it over. One, okay, two. two. Oh, one, together, two, I'm three. not gonna be helpful. Oop, there you go. That's okay. Awesome. Look at that. All together, right? Okay. So I'm gonna put just a quick line of, of a very glue or quick something? drying glue. Okay. Down here. Now Do you the have to be is, careful about how you apply the glue, or are you just yeah, sort of slapping it in there? I'm kind of slapping it in there. How about you do that one? Oh man, trusting and me again. And the very end. Okay, so I also want to do the end. The very end. Okay, I got it. There you, you go. You ready? Yep. What are we doing so, now? This is easy peasy. We roll. One. Should I roll two, two or are you just going to roll it all? Three, four, five. Grab your tape. Oop, there's the tape. And we're going to tape them together. So I assume we want to line it up, which is what I'm doing over here, just to wiggle it as close as possible before we actually push the tape down, there you go. right? That is super cool. I can't believe that we could do that just with masking tape, no clamps or well, anything. Well, because clamping this would be really tough. Right. And typically what I would do at home now is I'd put it on a surface that gets it all flat and hold it for about a minute. Okay. So I've got one already done. Yep. We're good to go. It looks so cool. Now, it, check out the seams. You'll see that they're not flawless. You know, we well, have they some- They look pretty flawless to me. They look pretty flawless, but we could do better. Okay. So if you give me that filler, yep. I'm using, I'm gonna stain this finished project, if I can get my fingers. <laughs> In the gloves, it's the hardest part Am I the only one it, that right? ever has trouble with this? It's always one of those issues. So wood filler is just, is it like little baby pieces of wood? Is it a chemical? Like what is it? This one is a combination of an adhesive and sawdust, right? Okay. And the nice part about that is I just press it in here and you get it fairly smooth, but not perfect. Okay. And that's gonna dry and then be sandable. Oh, so then this front edge is gonna look completely and seamless. I did all the inside seams too. Oh, wow. Because I'm fussy. Well, you know, you want it to look professional, you worked hard on it, and you want it to look great. So if you take that aside, we yep. would let that dry. Okay. Then we would go through and sand it. Now we're ready to stain. And when it comes to staining. I know you gave me the best tip the other day about staining because I was wondering about how you do that. Well, save your scraps, always save your scraps because you really don't know what a stain is gonna look like. Until you try it on that particular piece of lumber? Because different wood will have a different characteristic for the grain and everything. Okay. And you wanna wear gloves when you stain because it stains. Because it stains, <laughs> so, unless you like having fingers that match your floor or your project, right? And I'm using just a lint-free cloth. I was gonna say, it looks like an old t-shirt or something. And you can use a brush to apply stain, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I learned from my dad, which is old school, and I like to use a rag. So I notice you're rubbing it sort of with, in there with the grain. With the grain. And look Ooh, at that. This it's is pretty. This is dark cherry. I love the color. Mm -hmm. So would you try a bunch of different colors and then decide which one you liked? Is that how this works? I would because I have the stain at home, so I don't mind trying different ones. Okay. You know, if you're buying a stain, they'll have samples in the store where you can compare. Compare the ends as well as the oh, interior. Oh, because the cut part of it is gonna, look, gonna look different. It's gonna look different. Interesting. But look at that color. It's beautiful. I think that's great. Now the last thing we need to do, now if you get any on any surface, mm -hmm. alcohol will take it off, so we have some over there to save us. Okay. Let's take the last part. We've got one yeah. done. Here you go. And I wanna put a backing on it. Okay. So, so I let me just, clear this out of the way for you. I just traced it onto a piece of cardstock. Okay. And if you would help peel off our tape. Yeah, so we're just gonna have some double stick tape on here, which I am gonna peel all that off for you. And once that is all off, you have a pretty piece of foiled paper. Now, I didn't cut this exact, and I think this is a great little trick too. Um, it's okay if it overhangs, no worries. It's all on there, right? And we can got it. We have a little bit of overhang. Yeah. So we're gonna take some sandpaper. You always wanna sand from the front to the back, and that'll trim this paper to exactly. Without even using scissors. That's really cool. And you really can do cool. this on wood or cardstock. You see how it's tearing that yeah. right at the line. When we're all done, mm -hmm. we just mount it to the back. I was gonna say, you have your empty shelf right here, and you have your, and you have your full shelf. And if we look at the finished one, you can see how great it looks with the backing, or if you just wanted to put it up on the wall just like this, very cool too, right? There you go. 
Thanks, Joe. This was Thank great. You. And it does seem like something I could do. I know you can.